So I get this question asked quite a bit. What do I run Home Assistant on? Do I run it on Raspberry Pi? Do I run it on Hass OS, Hass IO? No, I don't run it on a Raspberry Pi. I have an older machine with a few hard drives in it and it boots from USB and it runs this amazing piece of software called Unraid. Right off the top, it's not free, but I do highly recommend this piece of software. The basic tier for six attached storage devices is $60. It's well worth it, trust me. So what is Unraid? It's network attached storage. You have several hard drives, you have a media server, you can back up all your content. You also have parity drives in case one drive fails, then your other drives will recover and you can swap out that hard drive. There are some pros and cons to the Unraid and RAID, which I'm not gonna get into, but for the home user, Unraid is perfect because it's scalable. You don't have to add all the hard drives at once. You could just add the one hard drive like I did during this video. Then later on, as you can afford more, you add different hard drives or upgrade different hard drives. It's all scalable. You can run your applications on it. You can run VMs. You can do thousands of different things and it just truly changes things having an Unraid machine running in your home. And it's super simple to control with with dashboards to control all the Docker containers, to install more Docker containers, to stop and start Docker containers. You can literally do just about anything you want. And there's the best thing of all, there's no command line needed. So let's get to it. Do prefer you have a solid state drive for your cache and your Docker containers and possibly your virtual machines. It'll run a lot quicker. And you don't have to do all the hardware at once. You could do uh, say a solid state drive and then say one hard drive and then you could add up to doing you know a second hard drive and a third hard drive later because it's a scalable system. And go ahead and you you can use some older hardware. You, you may have an older desktop computer you may not be using anymore. You have up you can go ahead and try that and play with it and see what you like and see what kind of hardware you do want to go with. Something that's more a little more power efficient and has more performance for transcoding an Unraid or something. So to install it, we're gonna to go to unraid.net and we'll go to download on the top right and you download the USB creator for either for Mac or Windows. So once that downloads, you need to open up the Unraid USB flash creator. We're gonna use the stable version. We use Unraid 6.6.6 .6 at the time of this recording of the video. Make sure your USB flash drive is selected. It will erase and wipe that drive. We'll hit right, erase and write. It's gonna download the image. Once it's completed, it'll say writing done. Hit close. Make sure you stop the USB device and remove it. And then plug it into the computer that you're gonna be using and boot from that USB. I won't be able to show some of that steps due to the computer, the test computer I'm using. And once that boots from USB, look on that screen, it will, the very last step will show you the IP address of the Unraid server and we'll navigate to that using a web browser. So once you boot up and browse to the IP address shown on the machine, you should get in the first step, it's going to thank you for trying Unraid OS. You'll see the flash product, flash ID of the USB drive, and it will tie your registration key to the USB flash drive. So we're going to get a trial key. We'll click get trial key. We'll accept the agreement. We'll start the trial. And we'll hit OK. Next thing it's going to do, this will be different for everybody. I'm just using a test computer here with a couple hard drives. I won't have a parity drive. I don't have enough hard drives. But once you do get up to enough hard drives, you can get a parity drive. And that'll help you from losing any data. So you can see the flash drive here is the boot device. I would recommend a cache drive. And that's what I'm, I'm going to use a cache drive here as a solid state disk. And we'll use disk 1 as a hard drive that I have. And that's it for this test machine. And we'll go ahead and hit start. Now due to this drive I had, it won't mount it, but if you look here, it'll show you, it'll format it, and you have to say, yes, I wanna do this, and then we'll format the drive. And now we have a cache drive. So I can't go through every setting of setting up Unraid because there's just so much to it. It's very easy to use, but there it does get very in-depth if you want it to be. I'll leave a link to another YouTube channel that's great. It does a lot of videos on the Unraid OS with some good information. I'll leave that link in the description of this video. A couple settings I want to change to make sure is we're going to go to settings, 
go to date and time and I do want to make sure my time zone is set correct so we'll set that and say yes I'll apply that and also go to shares and make sure your app data is set to use the cache disk as, as preferred. That way it leaves all of your Docker information and all of your VMs on the cache drive, which would be your solid state disk, which would make it, make it very quick. Next, go to the settings and go to Docker. And you'll need to turn it off first. So we'll hit no, hit apply. And we're going to change the Docker V disk size to at least 40 gig. And we'll hit apply. And these settings are, are fine. And also turn it back on. So now Docker started. And next we want to install some apps. Now one thing we don't have is the apps tab in here. And the, to get the apps tab is very easy. And I'll leave this link in the description of the video, or you can just Google for Unraid install community applications. What is the apps tab? It's kind of like exactly what they're saying. It's like going to the Google app store and finding what you need, click and install done. It's very simple. To install this plugin, paste the following URL into the plugins install plugin section. So we'll copy the link address. We'll go to the plugins install section. Install plugin. We'll paste the URL, we'll hit install. We'll go through, plug and install. Now once you click out of it, you'll automatically see you have the apps tab now. You hit the I understand, it's got to the content, and there we are. Here's all the various apps and Docker containers to install. So the first one we're going to look for, of course, is Home Assistant. Home Assistant. If you look, you'll see the Home Assistant and Home Assistant Dev. We're not going to run the dev version right now. We're going to use the regular stock version. Hit the download button. You'll see it's going to name it Home Assistant. Repository is Home Assistant. You can leave all this default. If you want to see some additional settings, if there are, you'll click the button. You'll see Docker allocations. There's nothing really to this one. Just hit apply. You'll see it automatically will download all the various pieces for the Docker container. And it's going to configure and start that Docker container for you. So we'll let this download. So once it's downloaded, it automatically will run the command and start the Docker container. Click Done. You can go to the Docker tab and you'll see Home Assistant is up to date. It shows you that it's pointing its config folder to the Mount User App Data Home Assistant section. Now currently it's not set to Auto Start. So if you do want that, you just select it into Auto Start. So that way Home Assistant starts up on any reboots of your Unraid machine. So we'll go ahead and add in a couple more here. Go to apps. We'll look for MQTT. And you'll see Spanx MQTT. Hit download. The template already has all the information for you. The port is 1883, which we're familiar with doing MQTT. We'll hit apply. The smaller container, so it starts up. MQTT started. We look back in the Docker tab, and there it is. We'll go back to apps. Let's look for Node Red. Look for Node Red. There's Node Red official Docker. Hit the download. Now, on the repository, I did find before for Home Assistant, you need to put colon v8 after it. We'll leave the port as 1880. Now I noticed in the template before that they have this pointing to mount user docker app data node red. Typically all the other apps won't use, they'll use mount user app data. So we're gonna edit this. And just using the browse, 
we we'll go to user app data and we'll just put node save so it's mount user app data node red which matches the one with home assistant as well so we'll leave everything else default hit apply it's going to pull that image down and automatically start it up for you so once that is installed go to docker and now you can see we have home assistant mqtt and node red installed now before we jump ahead i'll go to and show you something in apps which is not just stuck to things dealing with home assistant if you wanted to install plex search for plex because you're not stuck to a raspberry pi you have much more power and plus you'll be adding more hard drives later that way you can add more media and everything else you like so under plex there are several things that come up as plex i like to use mostly when I can the Linux server repositories I've had better luck with the Linux server stuff and so if we want to install Plex it's the same thing you click install and it would download Plex there's lots of different apps in here and you can search for by categories you can search for the recently updated apps to see what everybody's been doing of course which we just covered there's the ESP home YAML we could download ESP home YAML and there it is there's all the we leave the default settings hit apply it'll download ESP home YAML it's this simple to install all the little docker containers in Unraid just go through and click it's just like the kind of like the add-on store in HASIO but the best thing about it you've got full control over the updates of all the different Docker containers. If you don't want them to auto update, if you do want them to auto update, or if you want just to notify you about the updates, so you could go read the changes and see if there's any breaking changes. And it, you'll be updating each piece individually. And plus, since you handle the Docker containers yourself, it's very easy to roll things back. So there's I'm not gonna go through all the applications. There's tons of applications in Unraid App Store. Just go through, and if you want anything else to go pull out, you go add it to your server. So back in the Docker, and now we can see we got ESP Home YAML, Home Assistant, MQTT, and Node Red. Go to one, you click it, and you can actually you can edit the configuration of it. You could pause it, you could restart the container, you could stop it, you could console directly into the container to see the files in the container. We're just going to go to the web UI. So boom, there's the web UI of ESP Home YAML. You want to go to Node Red, Web UI. Boom, we're straight into Node Red. I'm not going to go over the configuration of Node Red with Home Assistant. If you want to look at my part one through three series, I do cover how I installed it and configure it in Unraid with Node Red. If you want to follow that to configure your Node Red with Unraid. So let's go into Home Assistant. We'll go to the Web UI. For the current version, we'll just say this Unraid test, and we'll call it the password test Unraid. We're, go we're going to delete all this after anyway. Create account, and we'll log in. Unraid test test Unraid, and we'll save the login, and we have Home Assistant running all on Unraid. If you want to restart the whole container, go to Home Assistant, hit Restart. The little green arrows will spin, showing it's restarting the container. Once they stop, give it a few seconds, the container should start up. Let's refresh the page and see if Home Assistant started. And Home Assistant has started. It's that fast to do all your Home Assistant restarts. Now I know we're gonna have a blank configuration but we're gonna go in and configure MQTT here in a second. So one thing to turn on the Samba is automatically turned on, but it's not turned on for every share. So if you go to shares and then go to app data, go down to SMB security settings, hit export and say yes and apply. Now once you browse to the IP address or, and or the name of your Unraid server, you should see the app data in the flash. Go into app data and you will see your folders 
of Home Assistant. There's your ESP Home YAML, MQTT. You can change your Mosquito configuration. And best of all, I know I've talked several people through this. How do you get rid of retained messages? The Mosquito database will be in this folder and you could delete it and restart your MQTT to get rid of your retained messages. Here's how you add your passwords to MQTT. Just use the README. It walks you through how to put a username and password in MQTT. We're not going to put one right now. And one thing you do have to change because Home Assistant created all those files and they'll be kind of basically in read only because of the security permissions with them. There's multiple ways to do that. You could go into the terminal if you're Linux savvy and go browse to that folder and change the permissions on them. If you want a real simple way, and we don't have in any security set up yet, which you will want to do, set up a user ID and password on the server as you go through your various settings in the Unraid GUI. But if we go to our IP address in Win SCP, we'll go to the host name, which is going to be the IP address of the server, and then the username is just going to be root. We'll log in. They'll put us in the root folder. Double click. And if you remember, we mentioned earlier the app data is under mount user app data and there's your home assistant and ESP home YAML MQTT etc now do the same thing if you're trying to edit a file and the permissions are not letting you write to a file over Samba if you go into home assistant and any file you have an issue with it not letting you write to we're gonna do this to all the YAML files here that it automatically created and we'll right click it and go to properties and we'll adjust the write permissions to allow others to write to the file and hit OK. And that changes the permissions on those files. And we'll just close WinSCP. So now when we browse to Home Assistant, and we'll go to our configuration YAML. Here's our configuration YAML, which we're, everyone's familiar with. Go ahead and fill out everything you wanted to change. Now for MQTT, we'll copy a few sections out of the MQTT for doing our own MQTT broker. So we'll copy this into our YAML. Then we'll go to also Discovery, in case you want to use Discovery with ESP Home YAML. So we'll add those two pieces. The IP address is going to be the IP of your Unraid server, which I would recommend setting a static IP on the Unraid server or setting a reserved DHCP IP address on your router. So you won't ever want the IP address to change of your Unraid machine. So file and save. Then we'll go to Home Assistant, Configuration, check Config, and restart. So just to test the MQTT broker that's working, I had an LED strip that I used during the live stream previously with the ESP Home and just pointed it to this MQTT server. Due to MQTT discovery, it pulled up the light strip and we can control it and see the brightness and change the color temperature of this LED light strip. So we know MQTT is working. We've installed Home Assistant, ESP Home YAML, MQTT, we installed Node Red, all the Docker containers, and you'll notice during the whole video we never did any type of Linux commands or coding or having to install different things with command lines. Once you add in your different hard drives and you can make it a big media server with 10, 15, 30 terabytes with how many different hard drives you want with parity and, and it's a really great server. You can put all your media on it, you can back up your pictures. You can configure all kinds of different various Docker containers. There's so many different apps. You can scroll through apps for days, and they're real simple to install, such as everyone's talked about before, is the Let's Encrypt. There's so many different containers. It's a really great ecosystem that I really enjoy, and I find it great for home use. So I appreciate everyone watching. Make sure and subscribe and hit the bell icon and y'all take care.